Welcome to this core focusing class. We're going to start supine. So support your body as you bring your spine onto the floor and just bend both knees into your chest for a moment to kind of find that spinal positioning rolling through the lumbar, the back of the pelvis and using your hand to really lengthen through the low back, rooting the upper thigh bone. And then take your hands to your ribs and we want to guide the breath here predominantly into the back body, so into the kidney area. So with your hands on your ribs, just take a moment to connect to your breath. And feel the breath movement towards the earth, towards the floor. So there's a motion of the ribs moving together as you inhale. And even so with your arms overhead. So with your arms on the floor, same thing. Don't let your rib cage lift, but yeah, keep it connected and breathe into the back ribs. So there's a natural collection, connection, collection and connection of your front body. Getting ready for our first move. We're going to loop the left foot into the loop bend, the last one. And the second last or last loop is going to be the opposite hand. Keep your thumb out. Reach your arm up, plug your shoulder in, inhale breath. And then for now, keep the second leg on the ground. As you exhale, lengthen the bend as you hug to your midline. So it's again, inhale breath, lengthening, collect, exhale, and expand the movement. So just come into that rhythm for now, trying to maintain the curve in your lumbar and that sensation of hugging to the midline as you exhale and prolong the motion as well as the breath. You can lift your head or not continue moving. However, if it's too straining for your neck, keep it down and then get ready to switch sides. You can do it very gracefully here, switching the loops in the air, switching the arms, plug your left shoulder in now, exhale and engage. Inhale, breath to center, keep the length, exhale, engage and length. God. See if keeping the head down has a different activation for your body as opposed to lifting your head on the exhale. It is easier to activate the front body line lifting the head, especially if that's a challenge. However, if it strains on your neck, keep it down or support your head with the free hand. Okay. Last one, we add some pumps and then release and switch. Good. Now, here we'll focus on the palms in the end. Inhale, breath. And the resistance on the opposite leg. So hand very close to the hip and extend. So the foot is now in the air. We go to step two. Inhale, move up. And then exhale, lengthen as you resist your opposite leg. Again, decide for yourself about your head. Inhale, come up, exhale, lengthen, and then pump. Five, four, three, two, one. Shorten the belly. Very nice. Is switching sides. All right. Left leg comes up, resist it with the opposite hand. So the psoas stays collected to the core. Inhale, exhale, resist. You decide for yourself with the head. We go in five times. With a bit of rapid motion here, just to warm up the body, get it going. And then after five, exhale, lengthen. One more to go. And you're going to add some pumps, so you just shorten the belly. Five, four, three, two, one. Unless you skip it like I did. <laughs> okay. okay, we're looping the mid-thigh. Already familiar with position five, which is, you know, hugging 
the band around your mid thigh, looping it in, arms overhead, and then let's mobilize to twisting action. Inhale, center, exhale, twist. Good, root through the opposite hand. And you have the strap there, so you can add that resistance, spreading the legs a bit apart, when you feel like you're losing the core connection, lowering your legs. So exhale, lower, and then support from your core to have the legs come up and switch sides. Just keep moving for now. Getting nice mobilization, about 10 times, and then back to center. Rolling your spine, get yourself really curved, really round, flexing the spine. And then we're gonna transition right into Uttanasana. So as you have your swing, plant your feet on the ground, and then forward fold, feet hip width apart. We are adding some twists here as well. So feet, hands in front of you or on a block at the center between the feet to get ready to inhale, reach your right arm up, bend your left knee. Here we go. You can keep the hand on the hips for now, on the pelvis, or reach it up. Switch sides. Inhale, bend your left knee, reach your right arm up, shoulders back, and exhale. Inhale, switch, bend your right knee, left arm up, and continue. Try to especially lengthen through the side body. So it's the thigh bone that pushes back and lengthens through the side of your waist. And your head is an extension of your spine. Or you simply look down to reduce strain on the neck. All right. And then... More gracefully than me here, step back into downward dog. Find your dog. That being said, you may want to bend your knee or just find that stillness of the length in your spine, the front ribs connection. See where is that front rib connection for you. In fact, even hybrids and then bring it back together before we go into Pavrita Alamukha. Svanasana, yeah, so twist it down dog. Bending your right knee, left arm underneath, grab the outer edge of your foot or heel, and then try to symmetrically balance your hip. Keeping your standing arm bone lifted, lengthen your entire body as you twist and switch sides. Bend your right knee to grab it with your left hand and then find your twisted down dog here. As you use your leg power to balance the symmetry. Let the spine lengthen with gravity and on the exhale, add the twist. Very nice. Walking into plank pose, we're gonna add some crossed vasisthasana, keeping the loop Band around the mid thigh right now. Find your plank, your opening of your chest without hanging through in your low back. Now from your plank, we're going to add some crossed vashistasana. Get ready to pivot onto your right hand as you move your right foot underneath and then extend that leg. Yeah, you can switch sides already but bend your knees and to find that extension of the low back the lower leg yeah adding a nice weight bearing component to your upper back and keeping the standing leg bent for now just so you have a nice extension through the bottom leg and we're going to switch dynamically here back and forward adding to our 10 reps Making sure we pluck the upper arm bone nicely back to support that weight bearing situation in the upper back. And by bending the knee, you just take a little, you know, weight off the upper back and stay very dynamic and fluent through the lower body as you continue. Have your core engaged as you engage your legs into the band as a support, as an assist. 
and then after your approximately 10 reps come back down onto your knees well done good job find all four position and then lift your right leg to do some isolated hip extension now taking your right leg back and up with your knee bent I want you to feel that hip extension without having movement in the lower back so that being said your transverse abdominis your lower core your deep core your actual core has to support yourself in exhale so it has to engage before you actually lift the leg now we do the same onto the side just some isolated hip abduction which later on we're going to repeat on our backs to find that isolated motion of supporting your core by having the antagonistic action of your stabilizers so again exhale your core is already engaged your lower belly is stable imagine you have a coffee cup on your low back and you want to keep that one full adding our twist right arm underneath for twisted all four and switch sides or thread of the needle variation well done keep moving for now just want to you know bring that mobility and that dynamic motion into the body never forgetting the twist to properly engage our entire core so our body is fully supported as we continue moving through class waking up and recruiting the stabilizers and finding precise motion now into your last one right arm underneath stay and you can add the extension of your left leg as an option to just find that nice opening between your right shoulder blade and spine and then switch sides for your left left arm underneath extend or not right leg to the side there we go make sure you always have very little pressure on your neck it's all on your shoulders if that is not the case you can elevate the floor by putting a blanket underneath your shoulder all right back to plank lower plank we go baby cobra as you spread and lengthen through your entire body and then adding the twisting here on the belly so this time we take cactus arm and move dynamically in reaching one leg back behind you and switching side now in doubt about your bottom shoulders in order to prevent the upper arm bone popping forward push your forearm into the earth and only go as far into the upper back twist as you can ensure the upper arm bone to stay back keep moving you're working for our 10 dynamic reps here before coming back to cobra pose back to plank and downward facing dog again stepping into the lunge you can just slide your band up like you're familiar from the first class reaching your arms overhead take a nice side stretch here move your belly towards you as you lengthen through your left groins breathe all the way into your diaphragm and then adding the twist left arm to the outer knee step one you keep your knee down step two you lift your knee and then really lengthen through that back leg big toe mount as you find that twisting action and perhaps let the gaze come with you the gaze on the ground is very stable graze up is a little instabilizing adding a, another lunge option one option two adding a wheel lunge finding the right arm on the left heel as you reach back keeping the belly close just breathe and then switching sides very simple reaching right arm up again level your pelvis hug your belly in and then lengthen all the way through your groin breathe into your bottom ribs keep that side long twist option one stay 
Option two, lift the back leg. Inhale, lengthen your spine. And then add that twist from the extension of your back leg through the top of your head. Case down is stabilizing, back knee down. And as you're stable, again, no lunge, simple reach, or you go into the wheel lunge. And I'm doing not much explanation here as we have this pose already in the first class. Transitioning to all four, I want to quickly differentiate really what it means to integrate your shoulders as opposed to not. So on the Hatha Asana, in this position, on the pinky side of your finger, you actually allow your chest to descend. You're extending into the shoulder as opposed to when you maintain that line of wrist, shoulder, hips yeah and if you do that you can see and test for yourself can you actually lift into the down dog without hanging through yeah meeting one another on all four we're going to now do a funky thing <laughs> you loop into your left foot and into the right hand okay from all four, exhale, extend, and come back together. So again, stabilizing your mid-spine as you extend. Inhale, center. So it's unilateral, right arm, left leg. Inhale, make sure the belly stays close. And we're going to repeat, this is option two, in the downward dog. Now this one's a bit more challenging to stabilize, especially your standing leg. The right hand blocks the strap and then left leg goes back and up. Inhale, center and see if you can create that motion only from your hip. So your right hip stays back, your lower back doesn't move, your chest doesn't sink. It's just that extension of the leg. Beautiful. Grounding through all four or all three at this point. And then coming back onto your knees. Well done. You can always add a cat cow to kind of neutralize your spine and find that beautiful, you know, repositioning. Switching into your left hand, move your right foot to the side, and we're gonna take a side stretch. Right hand is in front of the right shoulder. Both shoulders hock back, lift your left leg from your core. Inhale, knees, elbow, touch, extend. Okay, again here, little motion in the low back. You can round your spine, but don't hyperextend as you extend. So it's curling in, shortening the front, lengthening through the limbs. One more to go. Exhale, lengthen, lower the foot. Make sure the strap is behind you and then take a side stretch yeah so that full lengthening of that band is theoretically what we want to feel in the body a sensation of lengthening and strengthening at the same time moving carefully back plant your hands and now switch your foot you can try to loop into the opposite foot without the help of your hands or you just help it <laughs> Stabilizing on all four. So right foot, left hand. Find your center. Inhale, breath. Exhale, engage. And extend the bend. Inhale, center. Right foot, left hand. Yeah. So especially as you lengthen, when you add that resistance, you already want to be stabilizing your core. So it's always a little bit more than you think. So hugging the belly in. Yeah, hold. That was the fifth one. Plant your hand. And either you keep going for another five on your four or you add the down dog variation. Where now you're doing more stabilizing work. Extending the right foot. 
inhale center exhale already draw your front ribs in and then extend the foot so you really clearly feel your glutes to work on five exhale extend good job head is loose gaze is down and then slowly back on all four this time right foot right wrist we're going to transition to the left knee foot moves to the side from your core lift your leg good hug your belly in find the elbow knee connection and extend good round your spine and as you extend find neutral mm -hmm. having that shoulder nicely plugged in exhale work on five all these motions are going to become more familiar. They might be a bit foreign and you might not keep pace with class. That's totally fine. That's why we have a recording so we can stop it. Bend behind you, plant the foot and then take a nice side stretch with a little bit of C curve in your spine. Ensuring the front body connection. Beautiful. Big, big kidney breath here engage in life in that back body of yours and i'm moving back beautiful keep the upper arm bone back as you plant your hand and your knee back into a neutral position yeah you can again move your spine and just settle to the effect of gravity you know, pulling your belly closer to the floor and kind of finding that balance of it. Now on our knees, we're going to do some shoulder mobilization to keep the foot strap the way it is and come onto your knees. Loop in with both hands. Now, if you want to have it really loose and you're working on your core stabilization, use the last loop, otherwise second or third last. Again, more resistance, more muscular work. Focus is mobilization. So we are basically moving the strap over the head with the palms together without hyperextending the low back. So coming into a little C curve, keep neutral as you have the strap, pull your shoulders behind you. And this one, I couldn't explain it without any images or pictures. You just have to like see it and actually try it. The strap will pull your shoulders back, keep your front ribs together as you go with the flow of this beautiful mobilization, grounding through your thighs and rolling over the sides. Good, find neutral and then hug your ribs in, shoulders neutral and extend the strap. Beautiful. Have the full length through your body triceps are extending and then come back to center good let go of the left hand and come back to the side right foot right wrist and into the side stretch strap behind you very important otherwise it'll flip now adding to that c curve really expand your kidneys and then get ready to switch sides yeah so we have to loop back. You can go through Uttanasana. It's a very nice transition here to switch the band. Getting a moment of forward fold. Secondarily. <laughs> Finding a nice grounding through the thigh bone. And then slowly back to your knee position. Okay. Getting ready for the second side. Let's loop through the left foot, both hands in, bend your elbows, and then roll your shoulders. So maintaining that neutral positioning of your pelvis, try to have that motion happening mostly in your upper body as you just, you know, very fluently and dynamically move with your upper body, moving into the side, strap behind you, to the opposite side. Really a mobilizing manner while you maintain that core connection, that sense of center, that sense of your midline. 
extend your elbows as you keep your pelvis neutral front ribs in breathe big breath into the kidneys lengthen the spine drop the shoulders into their sockets and then slowly release well done we are transitioning through uttanasana so from all four make your way back and for now just put the strap aside for some you know dynamic motion continuing to mobilize the shoulders and the side body for our upcoming peak right leg forward lunge yeah take your right leg back and then reach your right arm over your head through the back and back down so inhale breath move the hip the thigh bone back hip towards the pelvis send the pelvis down and then move your arm forward just gonna do that in about five repetitive motions before we elongate the opposite side body which is really that combination of controlling your lower body and extending the upper body left foot back lean forward send your thigh bones back here and then we do modified washi oh modified parsa konasana side angle pose reach the top arm over your head before you move the arm back and down the head modifies looking down to release the neck and then just circle the arm keeping thigh bones back and that knee tracking over the front ankle you get a sense of steadying your lower body as you find that freedom through the upper body lunge and then get ready to switch sides downward facing dog left foot forward right knee down okay. lunge let your hips lengthen in and move your left thigh bone back left arm from the length of your spine move back so there's a strong connection from your front foot into the left thigh bone now that's rooting deeply lengthening through the spine simply circling the shoulders and yet the shoulders are really connected into the upper or back after about five motions turn your right foot back lean forward move your thighs back so make some extra space in the inner hips before taking side angle pose modification with the back knee down and encircling the arms circle up and towards the back leg finding a sense of freedom in the shoulders that really comes from this solid base and then moving over through the sides we're going to come into a seated position we're getting ready for surya so left knee bend right knee foot on the ground bring your right shoulder on the knee so in the seated variation there's a challenge of really lifting up through the side body but what we just experienced we really want to translate into this posture your modification is to take the right foot into the bend and hold it with your opposite arm lean back take your shoulder back and then extend the leg adjusting reaching with your top arm left arm up wherever you need to be or grab the strap a little closer now for me it works better to hold the foot here to really get a nice connection into thigh bone before extending the right leg up that's the full pose of Sturya Yantrasana Sandhya pose lengthen through the sides as you extend through that right leg yeah getting lots of freedom into your diaphragm so your left waist is super engaged and lengthened or option two 
If the seated poses is not an option for you, it could be supine. But either way, if you've done option one, continue with option two. That's a really nice way of making gravity work for your body. So right knee to the side, like happy baby pose, but start to move your shoulder, your right shoulder underneath and hold your foot or again, extend your arms, make your arms longer with your strap, extend the leg and then move your shoulders in front here. For now, the left foot is on the ground or you can hold it and just let it turn outward. Oops, <laughs> strap lost the grip so in this pose when we use the strap as a just an arm elongation really like a yoga strap replacement make sure you go deep enough with your loop and then the other option is to hold your foot with your arm and then also and this goes very deep into your diaphragm and so was connection you can extend that left leg alongside the floor. Play around for a moment to see where you can access your body most conveniently. And gravity is really helping you to keep your spine long, which is such a challenge in the seated variation. So extending our foot on the ground, some option. Or extending that leg and then breathing big time into the front rib mm, through that whole line of your front left groins. Where you see my hands move. It's very intense on that whole <clears throat> deep core line engagement and lengthening more than it is seated just because gravity gives it a nice extra pull. Carefully look to the leg that it's extend the bent the knee and release. Well done. Come back to seated. Second side. Sundial. Bend your right knee. And then by now you already know the variations you work with. So it's either the foot looped into the strap deep enough, moving the foot back behind you. Make sure you lengthen your spine or sit a little elevated. Extend the leg as you lengthen through your right waist. Extending that leg always a little more than we think. Or you go with the variation where you don't need an assist, but you grab the outer foot, root your thighs back, and then extend the leg and the right arm simultaneously. The bottom shoulder dips a little forward, you got, but you keep engaging it back. And since there's no weight bearing happening, it's fine for it to move a little bit forward. Yeah, let's do the supine variation. Yeah, so you cradle your left chin, comes supine. Just really lean your whole body to your left as you get ready to extend that leg or make the foot strap connection with your shoulder in front and then see which leg variation of your standing leg the right leg works best for you today so it could be knee outward or extending that leg which it's okay if it's a little in the air it's really the gravitational length Lengthening here that we'll get through extending that straight leg and breathing into our diaphragm, which is a big part of our core, core deriving from the French root, la coeur, or the middle, the center. Nice idea that the breath is our center, besides the actual active core connection aspects. Also demo it with the strap if you need to see one more time how to do that. 
You want to find a nice sensation of lengthening through your right outer shoulder, but it shouldn't strain. So if it does strain, make sure you use the strap to get your shoulders in front and then to extend that leg. Or if you notice your body dipping too much to one side, it could also be a nice way of just creating more space if it feels, you know, crunched up. <laughs> Find that freedom of really transferring or transforming a sensation of contraction into expansion. It's like in life challenges, right? In obstacles, life challenges, they can become compressive or ultimately expansive. And the practice supports us to find that expansive matter. All right, we do thread of the needle pose on our back, left foot on top of the right. Just find your neutral position now. Since we're dipped to the side a little, find that neutral base and if possible, a little curve in the low back. And then switch sides, lean back. Root your upper arm bones into the earth. Just keep breathing generously into deep places in your pelvis, your hips. Connecting to all aspects of your body comfortable and perhaps slightly discomfortable ones and so much of this practice really is you know becoming more comfortable with discomfort right without pushing beyond the natural boundaries of our body moving into a single leg stretch here just as a preparation or as your one option for the next pose, extend your left and bend your right and switch sides. And we're going to do that with a prop. So have a block ready that is now placed underneath the back of your pelvis. So we can use more gravitational effect to lengthen through that deep core line. As you bend your right knee, make sure there's nice length through your lower back. So block it has to be low enough. If you're more comfortably flat, you can also do that. Block flatter or no block at all. Keep your shoulders back as you extend through that straight leg and then switch sides. This kind of completes our previous sundial pose supine. This is a really nice way of finding that idea of lengthening through the groins and the diaphragm right into our core line and then bending both knees we're just going to use the back of the block here to for a brief fascia release rolling the legs to the right and left just see what's there what your body tells you if there's any gunks or any sour spots that want to be turned sweet or simply take that moment of release And maintaining the supine position, once you come off the blocks, you're gonna repeat one more time what we did earlier on all four. So it's just an isolated hip motion, but we'll need the strap for some support. So loop it back on, round your mid thighs, nice and snug. So you can keep your hips or like sip with a part, I have to say. And then first one, once you find your neutral position, hand straight, like you're on all four, we're gonna do the hip extension, okay? So tipping one leg, the other leg down without having lower back motion. And just breathe and switch, keeping the belly close to the spine. Think of it like a magnet between belly button and sacrum. Tipping right, tipping left, 10 in total. And then the second motion we did on our four. And it's not that relevant if you keep your hands flat or facing one another. 
is moving the leg to the side. So right leg moves to the side as the low back is practically doing no motion. It's just a hip abduction against resistance. So inhale, exhale as you move the leg to the side, your core engages. So connect back to that midline. Exhale, moving the leg and enforcing the connection. And then on your left. Shoulders are plugged in. Come back to the breath. Inhale, exhale, move the left leg to the side. We go to four and five. And then placing the feet on the ground. Lift your pelvis up. Feet underneath the back of the knees and lower it back down. Just five times dynamic bridge, crowning through the inner feet as you expand through your chest. Inhale, lift up. Lengthen through the low back and exhale, slow down as you come low. Inhale, back up. Just find that rhythm of five. And we're going to progress onto our heels, heels slightly away from you. Inhale, move up and back down. So I want you to engage your hamstring now. You actually kind of tuck the tail a bit and then with the option of doing it in one leg. So left leg up and repeat for five, lower and back up. Stretch into the band whenever you lose connection or your pelvis tilts and switch sides. Left heel, right leg straight and give some tone back to that back line of yours and back body and lower and up and lower and up so you have your five and then symmetric as well which is option one to find the center again and then lower your pelvis tug your tail as you bring it back to the ground Beautiful. Reach your arms overhead, shins parallel to the ground. And as you exhale, push your legs forward like you're moving them through thick molasses. Inhale, exhale, lengthen, push. You want to push only as far as to maintain your lower back to tone the front body. If you have a hard time doing this, it's helpful to lift your he head as you push your leg forward. Inhale, exhale, go only as far as you can maintain your belly button to sacrum connection. Yes, exhale, keeping the belly short. Inhale, lower. We're going to 210. It's a symmetric motion. And the last one, we pump. Small pumps and come back. Twist. And as we are already familiar with the twist here, legs engage into the strap, you can extend your top leg as a progression for just moving the legs to the side, which is a bit more work for the core to bring your legs back, or you keep both knees bent. Mobilizing and yet connecting through the midline of your spine. So, for average of 10 and then roll up as you curl your spine transitioning onto your legs once you're ready plant them and use your hands or not to transition into Uttanasana Planting the feet, ground your big toe, pinky toe mount down, bend your knees, Utkatasana, reach your arms up and engage your legs into the bend. Exhale, cactus arms, straighten the legs. Inhale, sit low, reach your arms. Exhale, extend the legs, cactus arms. Inhale, lower down, but keeping the knees pointing towards the pinky toes. Exhale, cactus arm. So I really want you to feel your thigh here and the support that comes from your legs to your lower back. Lower down as you reach your arms up. And we're going to add some lifting on the heels. Yes, balance, stretch, the 
Relax into the bend, plant your hands and forward fold as you lengthen the heels into the ground. And to wrap up this core sequence, interlace your hands behind your back, hug your shoulders back, lean to the right as you bend your right knee. We did the twist in the beginning, now we do that with a shoulder lace, lean to the left as you engage your shoulders back, extend the arms without hyperextending the elbow and switch to your right. Just do it two, three times to, you know, ease your body back into that side body. Finding that length through the waist and the twist in the upper back. Remove your strap before you step into your downward facing dog and we'll reach the right leg up here for a crossed Vashisthasana. Yeah, so lift the leg, find the core balance, bend the knee and move it through the bottom and to the side. Again here we bend the knees and then lift the pelvis and reach into the side body. Repeat. One more time, lower down, bend the knees, get a nice spongy effect, extend the top arm over. And then one more time to really find the hips rooting down, the side body lengthening. Before we bring the upper body parallel, move your bottom hip back and down and we're going to go into Bridget's cross here, lowering it to the floor and adding this very interesting form of twist that's initiated by the lower body. So give your guts a moment here to, you know, find their way of length and twist as you move on to your lower arm or maybe even extend both arms. And I'm breathing into that strong rotation through your entire spine. The back foot can stay or you can, you know, put it down. For me, I like it up because it just allows me to kind of find that twisting action more. Moving back, we're gonna transition to the opposite side. Downward dog. Moving this time, the left leg back and up. Find the core stability. Find that wrist, shoulder, hip, foot extension. Bend the knee through the bottom and through. Crossed Vashisthasana and then just bend the knee and find that length and do it again. Collect the body into the center and from there find the freedom. And once you connect it through that crossed, closed chain of your body, place the hand, turn the upper body parallel and lower down. Outer hip back or bridge cross, initiating the twist from the bottom. So it's a strong twist in your lower back, in your kind of gut area, so give it time. Mm -hmm. Always finding the length of your spine first before you twist. Now, this is our cool down and closing motion before we're gonna go into some breath work, some optional breath work, which you can also do already in the Shavasana position or you find an upright seated position. From this upright seated or supine position, find the breath, the focus of the breath in a square. So. Just bringing the full cycle of the breath into our objection. Inhale. One line up. Pause at the top of the breath. Exhale as you go, you know, the other line down. And then hold the bottom of the breath as you complete your square. So this square breathing it's very easy to visualize and a technique that will help you find the evenness of your breath throughout your day as well. Inhale, top of the breath, exhale, bottom of the breath, 
pause as you complete your square. Just visualize a window when you're going up as you inhale. The even rhythm pause as you move over. Exhale as you go back down. And hold the bottom of the breath as you complete the cycle of one breath cycle. Continue inhale up. This is one breath. Hold. Exhale. And hold again. You can feel your pulse here. Or you can bring thumb index together, finger together, and just notice if you can feel your pulsation, your breath pulsation in your body. This can be done supine as well as a preparation for Shavasana. And it's said that the awareness of the pulsation of our breath in our body and the ability to notice that is directly related to self-awareness. Find your position on your back if you're still upright through the sides to keep your nervous system at ease. Finding lots of space on the mat. Really, really spread out and take in space. Ground your thighs. Find something underneath your knees if you wish to have that. Thank you very much for participating in this class. Let your body get heavy as you simply allow things to happen organically and allow the body to find that hemostasis in its own Britain resting. Thank you for participating. Namaste.